Hey everybody, welcome to Boneyard Labs. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different today. We're gonna to be covering Proto Pasta's Copper Composite Heat Treatable PLA. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be covering the different processes that I use to try and get a nice uh, rusty patina look onto that copper to give it an actual real life uh, corrosion property uh, to finalize this product that I designed as an alternative process to actually just hand painting or airbrushing and doing all that type of stuff. So with that, let's get started. So some of you guys may notice what this is and recognize it. Uh, this is a Coca-Cola bottle that was picked up from Disneyland at their Star Wars location. Um, and they actually had it presented at the kiosk where you buy these from on top of a really cool stand. And when I asked them if I could buy the stand as well, they said they no longer manufacture them, they no longer sell them, they're all sold out, you can't get them. So I designed this guy, which actually untreated looks like this. So I designed and 3D printed this guy with that protopasta copper composite PLA. So it has a lot of copper inside it. We're gonna try to turn it into something like this. Follow along if you like. So for the first process that I went through, I used distilled white vinegar, some hydrogen peroxide, and some salt. I'm gonna go ahead and take a squirt bottle uh, and mix this solution up. And I'm gonna use 50% vinegar, 50% peroxide, and then I'm just gonna saturate it with a couple tablespoons of salt. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. And it doesn't have to be absolutely exact, I'm just kind of approximating based on the water levels there. I just decided to use a couple tablespoons. That's probably about right. And I just mix it around to make sure that the most of that salt has been dissolved. And while that salt is dissolving, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the next step. With these prints, they print with very little um, copper actually showing up on the surface of the part, okay? So what you have to do is you have to expose all that copper that's embedded into that plastic, okay? So to do that, I have a brass wire brush and really you just kind of abrade it because you'll see a shine start to show up pretty quickly. And you make sure you go all different directions so that you can get in all the little grooves and crevices of whatever your part is that you're doing. And you're just trying to scuff it all up. Oops. <laughs> Damaged my work surface there a bit. So now, if I hold them side by side, you should be able to see a difference. This one's pretty shiny, and then this one's still kind of dull. So you, that's what you want. You want to expose all that copper. So I went ahead and I did that to both of these. And my next step is I'm gonna use a spray bottle. I'm actually just gonna put it inside of a uh, plastic bag so that I can keep all the vapors and everything in there. Um, and it's kind of surrounding the part so that uh, it gives a little bit more of a total coverage. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray it in there. Let's give it a little spray, spin them around a bit. Spray it. <laughs> yes, the vinegar is a little pungent. And then I'll just seal it up. Just kind of make sure that they're nice and coated evenly for the most part. They kind of have like a bit of a bucket to them, like a, a bit of a low point. And this was what happened previously is I had a little pool right there, which is why it left a little more corrosion in that area where you can see that it dried up like that little half moon or crescent moon shape. Uh, so I want to avoid that. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of flip them upside down, let that drain off, flip them back over try to minimize some of that. So I'll leave it there for about an hour, but I'll come and check in every maybe 15 or 20 minutes or so and see how they look and pull them when they start looking the way I want them. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes or so. They're starting to show a little bit of sign of um, patina, that little bit of a, a blue haze, like a bluish teal. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in there. And uh, what I'll do is I'll actually just kind of smear it around to get that liquid in a new place, a new position on those parts so that it can still be kind of splotchy. Uh, but still be able to add the splotches in different areas so it looks more uniform, so it's not really heavily splotchy on you know, this side and then almost nothing on the other side. Um, so that's just kind of what I'll do there. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is off camera, I was working with this one a little bit because it is really uniformly corroded and aged. Uh, and I wanna add more of that kind of splotchy, grungy look to it like this one. Um, where it looks really inconsistent, kind of like what you would see if you were to like dig this thing out of the ground, right? And it was sitting there for years and years, just aging and corroding by the elements, right? So I'm trying to accelerate that process. So this one is really uniform, but what I went ahead and did is I went ahead and took some sandpaper. I bought one of these kits, these sandpaper kits that has 
220, 500, 1000, and 1200 all in one kit um, so that I can actually polish that up because I wanna try with one of these is to um, make it look really grungy but then polish these letters uh, so that it looks really um, bright and kind of shiny to add a little bit of contrast to the final product. So I went ahead and did uh, 220 to get rid of all the layer lines on those letters, those raised letters only. Then I went to 500, then 1000, then 1200. Uh, I'm gonna throw this in the bag as well. Saturate it a bit, seal it up, mix it around a bit. Okay, and I'll let that sit. So these have been sitting here for about an hour and a half and it doesn't really look like there's a whole lot of change to it, but what you'll see is we're gonna go ahead and rinse these off and then we're gonna go ahead and let them dry out and you'll see how it kind of changes a bit. So I just got done rinsing these off. Um, you can dab them off too as well and let them air dry. Uh, but I happen to have um, a food dehydrator that I use as my filament dryer as well. So I might as well just throw them there on low temperature to kind of help uh, dry these up pretty quick and you should see the change um, that develops as they start drying off. And I'll set them to about 45C. The thing is you don't want to go super high because you don't want to go higher than the glass temperature for the PLA because the PLA can only withstand so much heat before it starts getting soft and malleable and melty and all that stuff. So just high enough so that we're below that glass uh, glass transition temperature. Um, then things should dry off pretty quick. All right, so we've had this in here for a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and turn it off, open it up. These have dried out really nicely. So you can see when they you know, first came out, they didn't look white like this at all. And now they look like they got a real nice patina. It looks like I probably could have done a little bit better on the bottom edges here to get it to, uh, you know, get it a little more abraded. Um, but overall, it looks pretty good. Like I, like that, for example, I really like that. Now, the thing though is, is that I wanted it to look more like the original part that I'm emulating here. I want it to go a little darker than this. I'm going to do another process right over and on top of this thing, all right? So to do that, I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna clear this. So now we're gonna work on the second method of this process. So I had purchased this guy here. It's called liver of sulfur. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. So they tell you to have water that's about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't have water that hot. This is about 120, 125. So it says for maximum effect do 140, but I've gotten good results with a little bit lower temperature. So I have this here and I'm just gonna add a little bit So that is probably good. Close that off. And you definitely want to use gloves for this stuff because it's one, it's really stinky. Um, it definitely smells like you are either doing Easter eggs or you just have rotten eggs. Um, it's, it's a bit pungent. And I only have room in this little container for one, but all I'm gonna do is just kind of plunge it in. And just to keep it submerged since this thing is hollow, I'm going to just kind of wedge some um, plastic forks in there so it's fully submerged. Now this process only takes a few minutes, whereas the other one took, you know, 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half, depending on your results you're trying to go after. While that's sitting there for a few minutes, uh, let's talk about how to neutralize this one because this one you can't just rinse off with water technically. Um, you need to use water and sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda. So you just add a bit of baking soda to some water. And then when this is done, when it's at the right color that we want for our part, we're just gonna dip it into this solution to neutralize and stop the reaction of the uh, corrosion going on. All right, so if you get a point of reference, here's the one before putting it in this bath, and here's the one in the process. So what you can see is a pretty big difference. So, okay. so that looks about as dark as I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and neutralize it now. Give it that bath it needs. I'll do the same thing for the next one.
And I'm not really rubbing it because I don't really want to rub everything off if there is anything that wants to come off. All right, looking pretty dark. Let's see what it looks like when it dries off. All right, so these have just gotten out of the neutralizer bath and have dried off in here once again. So we're gonna take a look at these and see how they came out. Oh yeah, oh, that looks really good. All right, so check that out. That looks pretty rusty and aged and patinaed, if you ask me. I'm really happy with the way that one turned out. Next guy here. Yeah, not too bad. Pretty good. Oh yeah, check that out. So now we got a little bit of that bluing uh, of the patina right there. Um, pretty uniform. Yeah, I like the way it came out. So you'll notice this ring right here. They didn't really get um, corroded at all. Whereas this one did. Now I took some sandpaper and actually sandpapered right in that ring before I dipped it in there. Um, and it's just because my mangled up brass brush wasn't, it was so messed up it wasn't able to get in there to abrade it and actually expose that copper. So um, just uh, something to keep in mind uh, to pay attention to detail and prepping these to get them ready to actually corrode like this because um, you know, you'll want to get in all these nooks and crannies if you want a nice uniform one like this guy. Looks really awesome. Actually, I really like that one. Look at that. That's really cool. And you'll notice too that we have a lot of variety in our results. Like some have a little more bluing effect. Um, some of them, yeah, I mean, you can see bluing right in here. Um, some have some really dark tones and then some bare spots here, you know, so um, it really has a lot of variation between them. This one's a little lighter color, so I could just dip this in a little longer if I wanted to. Actually, I might go ahead and do that um, just to kind of get them all a lot closer in the same kind of tonal range. Um, but yeah, it definitely looks like exactly how I wanted it to. The last finishing touch that I did was I took some 500 grit sandpaper and just really lightly went over all the sharp edges of the part to help uh, add to a little bit more contrast to the part so that it can better um, emulate the look that I'm going for. Now, once these are completely dry, if you want, what you can do is you can go pick up some matte clear um, spray paint and actually just clear coat it. Uh, make sure you get matte unless you want that gloss. You want a glossy finish, you can do that too. But for this particular application, what I want to do is a matte clear so it protects it and it keeps it all encased in that acrylic or enamel. That way it'll keep the look preserved and it'll help encapsulate kind of all your work. Um, so you can show it off when you have this guy sitting on your display case somewhere. So last thing is to do a little housekeeping, right? We're gonna do a little cleanup for this liver of sulfur solution. Um, in order to neutralize this, you can leave it out for a couple of days and once it turns clear, then that's when you can actually safely um, dump it down the drain or you can dump it you know, in the gravel or wherever. Or you can use some baking soda and pour it directly into the solution to help neutralize it like that. Put it outside, check back on it in the morning, and then actually dispose of it that way. So that way everything's good, you're environmentally friendly, uh, and you don't kill any plants or get any dog sick or anything like that. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, let me know in the comments how your projects worked out. Um, if you followed this method or if there was a different method that worked better for you for your composite uh, copper um, PLA. Until then, happy printing.